has quite an interesting history to it because there's a lot of argument by historians and musicians about what instruments exactly the work was written for. Uh, some think that it was written for harp with accompaniment by a baroque quartet of sorts um, as part of a larger work, a uh, larger collection of works that Handel wrote called Alexander's Feast which was based on a story about um, Alexander the Great being sung to by one of his bards and being brought through all kinds of different emotions through the bard's music. Um, others think that because it was quite unusual for not only Handel but also any Baroque composer to write in a way that really showcases the harp, um, that it was originally written as a standalone organ concerto um, and still others think that it may have been a flute piece or a trumpet piece. But regardless of that tumultuous history, it is unique in that it's one of the few Baroque works that really feels suited to the harp 
and there's definitely a strong argument that it was written in order to, well, written at least in a way that shows off the harp's musical capabilities. So the next piece that I have moves us forward in time to the Impressionist era. Uh, it's called Ver de la Source dans le Bois by Marcel Tournier. And although, um, well, the title translates to Towards the River Through the Forest, and although there are many, many pieces uh, for harp called La Source about rivers and fountains, uh, Tournier sets himself apart from other pieces about fountains by, first of all, through the title, including images of forestry, but also through the different colours that he explores in a very creative way. He bends tonality and rhythm in ways that were, ways that are more noticeable, maybe, than in other harp works on the same or similar titles, creating a really vast palette that's very beautiful to enjoy.
is interesting because it is a work by Salzedo called Prelude Fatidique, which translates to the fateful prelude. Um, and the reason why it's interesting is that it provides, well, among many reasons, it provides quite a distinct contrast to the previous work, Fer de la Source, despite the fact that both Tourniere and Salzedo were both taught by the great Hasselmans. So Salzedo definitely works to bring some unique darkness and modernity to the harp with this piece. And I will say that I personally think of Tolkien's Lord of the Rings when I play this piece. I definitely, in my head, I think of dwarves and elves fighting off against the, the huge spider shalob. So I'd encourage you to think about what characters you might find in the piece. And I just need to grab that music.
you to keep going. So this next work is also by Salzedo, um, but it's quite different in character. It is called Jolly Piper, and it's a really playful fantasy on the famous theme of a sailor's hornpipe, uh, which I'm sure you'll recognize as soon as you hear it. Um, despite the fact that it is not quite as modern um, in style as most of Salzedo's works. It, Salzedo does do a lot to bring a unique character to the theme. He bends it a lot through rhythmic fragmentation and he brings it through a lot of different key areas creating really playful and creative piece.
thank you again. So the last work that I'll be performing brings us again forward in time into what is definitely postmodernism, and it also brings us to Australia. It is The Chamber of Horrors by Elena katz Um This work, despite the fact uh, that it's written by katz Chernin, who is not a harpist, does an incredible amount to explore, really push the boundaries of what sounds the harp is able to create and what images it can bring up. Katz Chernin definitely uses a lot of extended techniques throughout the piece, which are unusual even for extended techniques, um, in order to create images of the creepy and dramatic. As such, I believe that this piece is a piece best enjoyed with your eyes closed, uh, and I would invite you to consider what your own personal chamber of horrors may look like.